you so much for taking time to talk with us. Joe, your company, Massimo, is um, a leader in the pulse oximetry space. Can you talk to us about what pulse oximeters are and why they're important? Pulse oximeters measure your blood oxygen saturation and pulse rate non-invasively. The reason that they're critical is, first of all, in the operating room where they anesthetize the patient. Uh, the anesthesiologist is breathing <laughs> for the patient. So to know the oxygen is critical for the feedback loop for them to properly titrate you. But then it found its way into the intensive care unit, recovery room, and even now home, uh, because if the oxygen is wrong, either your heart or and lung is not functioning properly, and it'll warn you. And so people might know them, right, because they're the little things, the sensor wrapped around the tip of your finger, right, that tests the, test the oxygen. That's correct. If you've ever been to a hospital, you probably had one of our sensors on your finger. So pulse oximeters existed before Massimo was around. But talk to us about what your breakthrough was with the technology. The biggest problem with pulse oximetry right after it was introduced is that it didn't work if the patient moved or if the patient had low blood flow from low blood pressure called low perfusion. Mm -hmm. And the industry had given up. They thought those were just inherent limitations of the physical measurement of pulse oximetry. We invented a way to, in real time, accurately monitor the oxygen saturation, even during motion and low perfusion, using very sophisticated signal processing, adaptive filters, parallel engines. And uh, yeah, that's, that's how we got started. So when we talked before, you mentioned like in the neonatal you know, intensive, uh, care, intensive unit. care units, they'll, the babies would have a sensor wrapped around their foot, and then if the baby's foot moved, then the reading would, it calls a false alarm, right? The nurse would have to come or something. So with your technology, those false alarms have dropped, right? Because yeah. you're, you're, able to, you're able to deal with the movement. You... False alarm rates used to be 70 to 90% of the time. Uh -huh. It got dropped to about 3%. And the NICU, the problem of false measurement was even more acute because unlike adults whose eyes are developed, those preterm babies in a NICU, if you over-oxygenate them, you damage their eyes. So 12% of the babies in a NICU were getting terrible eye damage. 2,000 a year in our country were going blind due to false measurements of pulse oximeters. You're one of the, what, two biggest pulse oximeter uh, com companies in the country, right? Yes, yes. Uh, if you exclude the wearables, if you talk about the hospital what the products. Hosp for the hospital market. For the yeah. hospitals, we're probably the biggest company yeah. in pulse oximetry. You um, made a big acquisition in February this year. You announced to, your company announced that they're buying a speaker and headphone company and an earbud company called Sound United uh, for a billion dollars, a little bit more than a billion dollars. Talk to us about why you made that investment and what you think that's going to do for Massimo. Absolutely. Uh, we have been working for years to take non-invasive monitoring to new sites and applications. We took it out of the OR and the ICU and made it reliable even for the general floor. The next step is the home. The next place are people, whether they're taking opioids, prescription or otherwise, whether they have COPD. So we've been working on Things like this, uh, continuous pulse oximeter that's not obtrusive. And we needed a consumer arm. Sound United owns Bowers & Wilkins, Denon, Morantz, Polk Audio. These are 50 to 100 year old brands that had 20,000 distribution channels. Plus, we want to get into hearables. We think with our signal processing prowess, we can make earbuds a lot better, even for those that are losing their hearing, like me. And so the sound, the audio team at uh, this audio company, mm -hmm. along with our signal processing, we hope to revolutionize earbuds and headphones and hearing aids. Huh. So we could think, think about Apple's AirPods, but made by Massimo with maybe a hearing enhancement capacity. Is that sort of the direction that you're thinking of going? Correct. Wow. And you just came out, your first product that you just came out with is the watch that you're wearing, right? Yes. So talk to us a little bit about that watch. Yeah, this W1 is a little industrial. <laughs> it's made for hospital to home. It's made for people that really need continuous pulse oximetry 
for their health. And uh, we're very excited about it. There's nothing out there that does this. The, the difference between this watch and everything else is even bigger than when we introduced pulse ox for the hospitals compared to everybody else that was out there. And we've had a limited market release for hydration index. This is something athletes have been asking us for, vocalists. They want to be optimally hydrated. So we're excited. I believe we're the first company to have hydration information for people. And the amazing thing is, so there's sensors on the bottom part of that watch, right, That's that correct. are reading yeah. your, looking into your, through your skin to your, yeah. yes. to what are they looking at? Are they looking at your They're veins or your capillary, capillaries? Capillary bed on your wrist. Mm -hmm. And it's a very tough measurement. Pulse oximetry is not such a hard measurement, but this site is. But our whole world is how to get tiny signals overwhelmed by noise. That's how we even made what we call rainbow pulse coximetry, which is hemoglobin levels, carbon monoxide levels, non-invasively on your finger. Mm -hmm. Those are tough measurements. Of course, measure through motion is very hard. So yeah, so we've taken those technologies, adapted it for the wrist so we can do unobtrusive monitoring. I mean, the idea that you can measure hydration non-invasively through like a capillary on your, just in your wrist bed, that's pretty, pretty interesting. Yes. Yeah. So you just launched it. So is it too early to say about, I mean, what's the initial reaction been like? It's been phenomenal. Yeah. We had a limited market release phase. It's what we do to make sure by the time we go to full market release, we've uncovered hopefully all the problems. And we did. But during that process, the feedback we got from hospitals that were sending patients home with it to athletes that were using it was, it's, this is a game changer. They never had anything like this before. Exciting. So you have a really interesting and unique life story. Um, can you talk a little bit about your journey from, I know you grew up as a, as a child with your family in Iran and then you moved to the United States. Talk about when you came here and why. Yeah, I feel like my life story is a little bit like that movie, The Jerk. <laughs> Hopefully no one's going to get cross-eyed with my product. But yeah, I, um, you know, I, I lived in Iran until I was nine years old. I have incredible memories, fond memories of Iran. Beautiful country, wonderful people. Uh, my family moved to Alabama in 74. My dad wanted to get his engineering degree. And we lived a really humble life there. And then in 77, we moved to San Diego. Um, and uh, that's where I finished my high school. And, and you came to, to San Diego because you, also for your dad's education? Yes. He wanted to, after he got his engineering degree, he decided to get his MBA. And fortunately, uh, he had a friend of his that came here. By the way, Alabama was great. I loved it there, too. I had the best childhood there, uh, surrounded by wonderful people, woods, streams. Uh, it, was, it was great. It's, this has been a remarkable, remarkable life and journey and opportunity for me. So you started at San Diego State when you were 15, and you graduated f with a master's degree and an undergrad by the time you were 20, how old Two, were you? 22, 22. Yeah, yeah, that was fantastic. And, and then you only you started Massimo just a couple years after that? That's correct. That's correct. I started Massimo at 24, but I worked all the way through. <laughs> uh, so while I was going to San Diego State University, I worked for Burroughs, which turned to Unisys. I started working as an engineer around age 18. Mm -hmm. uh, so by the time I started Massimo at 24, I'd, I'd been at it you for, had an experience. for a so you, while. Were you going to school part-time while you were doing this? Or no, you... full-time. I worked part-time and went to school full-time. Yeah, wow. And that job that you had, so the job that you had at Anthem after, was after college. After college, that led yes. you into I moved to Orange County, and mm -hmm. I came for, first worked for Bell Industries and then Anthem, and that's where I got my macro view of the world. And... There was a lot more than just making computer chips. And your job at Anthem, I mean, you, you know, you talked to me about how there was this client that wanted you to build this $100 low-cost pulse oximeter. It was that pretty much how the job worked? Like you would just work for whoever Anthem needed you to design the, the semiconductors or whatever for, well, for the client? The, re the reason Anthem was interested in me, I had really good experience with semiconductor chips, custom chips, mm -hmm. ASICs. So I helped a lot of customers turn their big, product into small little chips. During that time, I met this company that was trying to make a low-cost pulse oximeter. I thought they were the third company. There was a lot more out there. They asked me to take over that project. And I went to my boss and I said, I really would like to do this. Uh, he said, well, you can do that as moonlight. It's got nothing to do with what we're doing. 
So I worked again back to doing two jobs like I did in college. I did that while I did that uh, weekends and nighttime. So Joe, thank you so much. It's been, it's been great talking to you. Wonderful hearing about your company and uh, good luck. Thank you.